This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. We're not back in the studio yet, but I have good news. Uh, knee surgery went well. I'm recovering uh, very nicely and it won't be long before I am back in the studio. Thank you all so much for your uh, prayers and support and encouragement and all that stuff. It is definitely paying off. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better. So knee surgery was a su- success, but I am still working from home, which is uh, why we're, we're still in this format. But uh, hopefully next week or maybe the week after, uh, I'll be back in the studio. So I wanted to uh, first give a shout out to Sasha Rose for this amazing shirt. Uh, she she makes them. They're great. So thank you, Sasha. I really appreciate it. Uh, all the way from Australia. Uh, so amazing stuff. Uh, and she's a fan of the show and a good friend of me and Christina's. Uh, okay, so there's been a news story that came out uh, about this supposed what's being called a ghost particle uh, from another galaxy that might transform our understanding of the universe after being detected uh in the antarctic so a single ghost like subatomic particle uh captured on earth might actually finally help solve a cosmic mystery that's left scientists baffled for more than a century i've gotten a couple of requests to do an episode on this topic because it is very timely this just uh this this was just released and people are wondering what what it all means uh so what this ghost particle is. It's a high-energy neutrino, and it's the first of its type that's ever been detected. Uh, It was traced uh, four billion light years to its source, a a distant uh, elliptical galaxy with a giant black hole at its heart emitting jets of light and radiation aimed directly at Earth. Uh, It's it's known as a blazar. So not a blazer, but a blazar. Uh, This galaxy uh, was the smoking gun that led astronomers to finally unravel this 100-year-old riddle around the origin of high energy cosmic uh, rays. So these rays, uh, they consist of fast moving elementary particles um, and they're constantly, you know, flying through earth from space. Uh, they, they pose a threat to astronauts as well as the crews of passengers of commercial flights. Even they, they can, um, but discovering the ghost like particle, which bursts from the blazar before the, uh, uh, earth formed from what, you know, scientists say, uh, this could provide an entirely new way of looking at the cosmos. So the neutrino discovery published in the journal science points towards one likely origin, uh, powerful jets of accelerated particles fired from the poles of rapidly rotating supermassive black holes, uh, which is pretty cool. But until now, the origin of high-energy cosmic rays was a complete mystery to to scientists. So beyond cosmic rays, the latest finding could provide uh, a new way of peering into the depths of the universe. So like like the discovery of gravitational waves in 2016, if you remember that, neutrinos could be a new type of messenger that uh, carrying energy across the cosmos. You could think of it like that. Neutrinos are the so-called third messenger following light protons uh, or or photon, light, not light as in photons, but light uh, protons and gravitational waves. So the high energy neutrino was first uh, detected in September 22nd, uh, September 22nd, 2017 by the uh, Ice Cube Observatory, which is a huge facility that uh, is a mile beneath the South Pole, the surface of the South Pole. So a grid of more than 5,000 super sensitive sensors picked up the characteristic blue uh, Cherenkov uh, light emitted as the neutrino interacted with the ice. So having almost no mass and passing right through planets, uh, stars, and and really anything else in its way, uh, this particle traveled in a straight line from its point of origin to Earth. So as a result, that's how astronomers were able to track its trajectory back across billions of light years to uh, its its probable source. Now, news of the detection sent astronomers into a frenzy of activity as telescopes were quickly pointed to the suggested direction. Um, The the search led to a to, to the discovery of a blazar, uh, which again is a special class of galaxy containing a supermassive uh, black hole four billion light years away, uh, and this one is is just left of the or uh, Orion constellation. Uh, so one of the key features of blazars is twin jets of light and elementary particles that uh, shoot from the poles of the swirling mass of materials surrounding the black hole. Um, 
So the neutrino detected by Ice Cube is thought to have been created by high-energy cosmic rays from the jets interacting with nearby material. Uh, Professor Paul O'Brien, who's a member of the international team of astronomers from the University of Leicester, said, quote, neutrinos rarely interact with matter. To detect them at all from the cosmos is amazing, but to have a possible source identified is a triumph. This result will allow us to study the most distant powerful energy sources in the universe in a completely new way, end quote. Uh, so what is a high energy neutrino anyway? Uh, they're chargeless, massless subatomic uh, particles. Uh, now neutrinos um, are one of the fundamental particles that make up the universe, but are some of the least understood as they uh, it, they interact very weakly with uh, everything around them. If you want to see a really interesting presentation on YouTube, you can lo look up Joe Lickens. He's a physicist that works at uh, Fermilab and CERN. Joe Licken, uh, just look up Joe... L-Y-K-K-E-N, I believe is how you spell it, neutrinos. And he's got a really interesting presentation about uh, just how weird neutrinos are and how fascinating they are. But but this makes them uh, ideal uh, astronomical messengers since they can, uh, they can fly through the universe without scattering or absorption or deflection or anything like that. Uh, but these, uh, these weak interactions also make the particles... Uh, really tough to detect. They're really hard to, to find, leading to neutrino observatories uh, requiring large-scale detectors. And the only time that they interact with other particles is when they collide head-on. So most neutrino detectors use vast underground tanks brimming with, with water and fitted with uh, extremely sensitive sensors to capture brief flashes of light emitted when a neutrino smashes into a particle within the fluid. Uh, but the largest neutrino observatory in the world, uh, Ice Cube, uh, it uses a kilometer-sized section of ice, which is about... Uh, one and a half miles beneath the, the surface of Antarctica, uh, close to the South Pole. But sensors are embedded deep in, uh, in the ice to capture the brief flashes that occur when neutrinos collide with particles in the ice. Uh, so capturing evidence of these collisions doesn't occur often, but when it does, it sets off a chain of events that uh, at the observatory to try to uh, determine where the neutrino originated. So most neutrinos come from the sun or cosmic rays striking our atmosphere. Um, so unlike high energy neutrinos, most co cosmic rays carry an electric charge that causes their trajectories to be warped by magnetic fields. Uh, and that makes it impossible to trace their origin. So in contrast, neutrinos are unaffected by even the most powerful magnetic fields. So th this blazar believed to have generated the, the neutrino. It's codenamed because you know they're fantastic at uh, naming these things. Codenamed TXS 0506 plus sign 056. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, call it Blazar 1. I mean, why not? But anyway, it was located uh, in less than uh, a minute after the Ice Cube team uh, relayed coordinates for follow-up uh, observations to uh, telescopes worldwide. So being able to detect high-energy neutrinos uh, can provide yet another window into the universe, and that's what the scientists say. So the sensational discovery of this so-called second messenger, you know, gravitational waves or or ripples in space-time, that was announced in February 2016. Uh, France Cordova, director of the U.S. National Science Foundation uh, that manages the Ice Cube Laboratory, said, quote, The era of multi-messenger astrophysics is here. Each messenger from electromagnetic radiation, gravitational waves, and now neutrinos give us a more complete understanding of the universe and important new insights into the the most powerful objects and events in the sky, end quote. Uh, now, cosmic rays themselves were discovered in 1912 by physicist Victor Hess during uh, using instruments on a balloon flight, uh, and later research showed them to be made up of protons, electrons, or atomic nuclei accelerated to speeds approaching that of light. Um, so what about this ice cube thing? How does ice cube work? It, it's the world's most sensitive neutrino telescope. Uh, it's a neutrino detector. Ice cube is a neutrino detector that's composed of 5,160 optical modules that are embedded in a giant uh, crystal clear piece of ice a, a mile beneath the, the geographic South uh, Pole. Now supported by the uh, NSF or, or National Science Foundation, I, 
uh, Ice Cube is capable of cap capturing the fleeting signatures of high energy neutrinos, which again are nearly massless particles generated presumably by dense, uh, violent objects such as supermassive black holes or galaxy clusters uh, or uh, energetic cores of star forming galaxies. Um, but the, the size of the observatory, it's a, a cubic kil kilometer of ice. Um, and it's important because it increases the number of potential collisions that can be observed. That's why it's got to be that big. Uh, and in addition, the type of ice that uh, at the South Pole is perfect for detecting the rare collisions. So most most ice contains like air bubbles and other pockets that would distort measurements. But at the South Pole, it's basically a giant glacier consisting almost entirely of water ice, meaning there are more atoms and uh, so, you know, so more more chance of a neutrino collision. Each of the round detectors are placed in a, a long string and lowered into uh, lowered into holes in the ice that were drilled using a powerful uh, hot water drill that melted up to uh, 200,000 gallons of ice per hole. Uh, and each cable string has 60 sensors uh, at depth with 86 strings making up the main ice cube detector. The giant telescope was uh, built at an average depth of 8,000 feet beneath the Antarctic Plateau at the South Pole, and the entire project cost $279 million, of which the NSF contributed uh, $242 million uh, towards it. The final stretch of construction ended with the drilling of the last 86 holes for the 5,160 optical sensors that are now installed to form the main detector. The collision between a neutrino and an atom produces particles known as muons, M-U-O-N-S, in a flash of blue light called uh, Cherenkov radiation, and, and we mentioned that briefly uh, earlier. So in the ultra-transparency of the Antarctic ice, ice cubes, optical sensors detect this blue light and the, the trail left in the wake of the subatomic collision is what allows scientists to uh, trace the direction of the incoming neutrino back to its point of origin, uh, you know, be it a black hole or a crashing galaxy or something like that, or, or this, this blazar. Uh, so it's really interesting. We're going to have to keep our eye on it to see what new developments might come out of this. I mean, it's it's exciting anytime a new particle or or something new is detected or discovered. Uh, it's it's exciting and, and we can learn more about God's awesome creation. That is the universe we live in. All right, I want to thank you all so much yet again uh, for the prayers and encouragement for uh, my, my surgery and all that. Everything is good. Hopefully within a week or two, we will be back in the studio. Uh, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and you got to click the little bell. You got to you got to do it. Um, and if uh, if YouTube still doesn't notify you, you're going to get j just know you'll get a new episode of Into the Multiverse every Thursday at 9 a.m. right here on this channel on YouTube.com slash Into the Multiverse. Uh, and or you can just go to Skywatch TV if you want to find the podcast and, and other things. So all right. Uh, Skywatch TV dot com. <laughs> so, all right. Once again, thank you so much. Love you all. And until next time, take care and God bless. Global experts are now debating whether humanity should fear the rise of AI assassins. Will transhumanism, singularity, and demonically infused killer robots be the last onslaught of Satan in an attempt to destroy every human on Earth? Learn what the Bible has to say on this very urgent topic now in the new oversized book terminated by legendary author Steve Quayle. In Terminated, you will learn why hundreds of artificial intelligence experts believe that humanity will soon experience gigadeath at the hands of autonomous killing machines. Why hybridizing humans is thrusting us toward a golden age of mythical monsters and godlike humans. And what Jesus declared about God's plan to shorten the days here on Earth, because if not, there would be no flesh left alive. Plus, when you order Terminated from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive the brand new documentary movie from Gen 6 Productions, Forbidden History Revealed. The Egyptian presence in the Americas and the Pacific Rim, The Great Smithsonian Cover-Up. 
Now, for the first time in history, you'll watch an eyewitness account of actual Egyptian artifacts and giant skeletons that were excavated from the Grand Canyon and burial mounds across the U.S. and South America, stored for over 100 years in a secret underground Smithsonian warehouse. This full-length feature film also asks the questions, why is the DNA of giant mummies and viable skeletons being extracted by the militaries of the world? Was a living 21-foot giant captured in 1877 with the most unusual features ever noted? And will the giants of yesterday become the super soldiers of tomorrow? These two incredible new works are available together for a special donation of only $50 now at the skywatchtvstore.com. So don't delay. Order Terminated, the Steve Quayle special offer. Online now or call 1-844-750-4985.